This is keyboard replacement on a Dell Latitude E6530. We're gonna try something a little bit different this time. Unfortunately, I had fans running and the audio was pretty useless. Even on the camera that got some decent audio, it's just too noisy and I rambled a little bit. So what's going on here is I got a keyboard in to replace this Latitude's keyboard and it's bent. This happens a lot. They like to ship keyboards when you order them online in bubble pack envelopes and they put them between two pieces of cardboard. Needless to say, that doesn't work very well. So they tend to arrive all bent up. The good news is it doesn't usually damage the keyboard. You can just bend everything back into shape or mostly into shape and the screws and mounts that'll just take care of the rest. There's this piece of trim around the keyboard that's held on with an enormous number of little plastic clips. So you have to take that trim off before you can do anything else. And that's what I'm doing right here. It can be really frustrating. You, you kind of have to develop a feel for how these plastic clips work. If you don't know, you just kind of wiggle them back and forth in a circular motion and they'll pop loose. I absolutely hate plastic clips. They are the bane of my computer repair existence. Now, oddly enough, these keyboards, they have a bunch of holes that look like screws should go through them, but there's really only, I think, three screws on this keyboard, even though there are about five or six holes. So, it helps to memorize where the screws came out of the keyboard whenever you take the old one out. And this is me spinning a screwdriver. It's riveting entertainment. Yeah, I'm surprised this isn't on primetime television. Ah, yep. See? These people who designed this stuff, they have screws that shoot through the back and into the bottom of the keyboard. I think this one has three. Sometimes it's hard to get the screws out and you have to use a smaller screwdriver. It really just depends on how they molded the plastic. So that's what I'm doing right there. I'm trying to get a nagging little screw out. And it won't come out. Even though I turn it out, eh, magnetics. They don't always hold everything. So once you get all the screws out, the keyboard pops up very easily. It's On these, it's just held in with screws on the bottom and a series of tabs on the top. It's a standard flip lock connector. There's nothing even remotely special about this. Now, one little mistake is the replacement keyboard is not backlit. You can tell because the old one has a white barrier on the back. The new one is just the metal with holes in it, and that usually means that there's no backlighting layer on it. And I checked, and sure enough, there wasn't any backlight enable key. Um, I don't think this customer really cared, honestly, um, so it wasn't a huge deal. But you have to be really wary of that kind of thing whenever you buy parts, because you don't know what you're going to end up with you can end up buying a non-backlit keyboard and in some cases the backlit thing is actually a pretty expensive little feature to get but honestly most people don't even use keyboards enough to notice they just want to go to YouTube and watch me do dumb things with computers uh, unfortunately you couldn't see me do that but that was locking the data cable back in place you slide the top tabs in you push the keyboard down. There are some plastic clips that hold the keyboard on the sides too, but they're pretty easy to engage. Throw a billion screws back in the keyboard because that's what we like to do with our lives is twiddle a screwdriver in the same motion over and over. This really is one of the most boring and simple computer repairs you can possibly do. I mean, if, if there's one thing that should be fairly easy to do yourself, 
keyboard replacement is it. The, the biggest challenge usually is getting that little flip lock connector and cable, getting everything lined back up. Really just not breaking anything. You gotta be careful not to break anything because I, uh, <laughs> I popped a connector like that out one time, and you'll probably see a video of it at some point. I had to put the connector back in place using a dental pick. Anyway, the trim's back in, screwed down, the cable's connected, the bottom screws have to go in. The funny thing is, the bottom screws don't do much. If you left them out, it would work fine. It might be puffed up a little bit in the middle. Since the keyboard's bent up a bit, the bottom screws will help to pull the keyboard back into conformity. But there you go, it's repaired. And now I'm going to show my hatred for the F2 key. Yeah, hit that F2 key. F2, 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 F2. I'm really just making sure the keyboard works. And that's it. Hope it helped. Have a good one.